Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your March 2020 mid-month general readings. We're looking at the last half of March. Welcome to everyone, newcomers, first timers, and welcome back followers and subscribers. Thanks for taking the time to tune in today and for all that you do in support of this channel. Even if it's nothing more than just tuning in and subscribing, it's all appreciated and I'm grateful for it. Thank you. I am coming to you from my new computer, so no more headset, better audios. I'm still kind of playing with the graphics and the audio a bit, but uh, technology moves much faster than I do. I am also uh, coming to you with a new deck of cards, uh, still by my favorite tarot artist, Ciro Marchetti, but um, just a different deck. And this one is called The Legacy of the Divine Tarot. Beautiful artwork. So this reading is for the water sign of Pisces for the last half of March, our mercurial little fish, Pisces. So that's Pisces sun, Pisces moon, Pisces rising, or if your Venus is in Pisces, or if you're a cross watching for a Piscean as well. Uh, as many of you know, general readings always resonate a little differently because there's so many of you watching and everyone has such different individual unique lives. So if you know any or all of your other signs, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, watch them all because it can bring in additional information which can help clarify things for you a bit. If this reading resonates for you or if any of them do and you'd like to take a look at something deeper or reach out for a personal reading, just click on the description link below. Uh, click on that little arrow which will pull down more info, contact details. You can email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be most happy to work with you. I do offer a lot of different types of readings in all areas of life and scheduling is done in a pretty timely fashion. I do readings full time. It's all that I do. So I'm pretty diligent at working with your schedule and mine to get readings out to you or set up with you as quickly as possible. So email me if you're interested. I'd be happy to uh, work with you. Okay. Pisces, let's see what the last half of March has in store for you. Okay, Pisces, we begin with the five of coins, followed by the knight of cups. King of Wands, followed by Strength, and from the bottom of the deck, overall energy for the last half of March is the Seven of Coins. So you're definitely taking inventory, taking stock of what you have invested in something and perhaps making decisions moving forward. Should I continue with what I have put into this so far, what do I have to show for my efforts? It appears to be a pretty good crop, but it's a seven, not a 10, tens being completion. Should I make changes? Should I abandon this, collect what I can and move on? So taking stock, taking inventory, kind of contemplating, uh, maybe trying to decide if now is the time to act because the seven of coins is a card of taking stock of what you have invested in growing something or you know whatever the investment and in, whether it's physical, financial, monetary, emotional, or a combination of all of those uh, things. She is getting ready to harvest, but she hasn't yet. She's kind of taking a look. So is it perhaps time to start seeing if you can reap the benefits from the efforts you put into something so far? But we have the five of coins clarified by the Knight of Cups. So the five of coins, now coins in my previous deck was pentacles, so it's governed by the element of earth, and this is about uh, stability, safety, things which give us a sense of those things, continuity, often in the physical structure of our life, which is why coins or pentacles often represents things like money, finance, property, resources, assets, job. Uh, in an emotional level, it can represent things which make us feel emotionally safe, stable, secure, like long-term relationships, etc. So the five of coins is a card of insufficiency, lack, needing, uh, maybe feeling like you don't have enough, feeling like you have to reach out for something. However,
it's interesting because this can represent insufficiency and lack in financial or monetary ways, maybe not having enough money or being out of work, being in need. But sometimes it can also represent that you're not paying attention to what actually is available to you. In this deck, she's standing in front of uh, the window to, uh, well, not a window, it looks like the wheel. In the previous deck, there are a couple in need standing outside of a church. There is an implication that what you need or the resources that you need is right in front of you or right around you or right behind you, but uh, you're not seeing it because you're only focused on the lack, the need, or what you see as what you're lacking. I say what you're lacking because I feel like this may be more of a insecurity or perhaps for some of you insecurity or some self-esteem issues or wondering if you're enough or if you have enough. For some of you, this might be a relationship, like a, rom a romantic connection or relationship of some kind. Although if it is, I feel like maybe this is someone that you have an invested friendship in. You may have feelings towards something more, but you maybe haven't quite presented that yet and you're wondering if you should maybe you're not feeling like you have enough to offer this could be like a work career project or maybe you're thinking about it could be as practical as perhaps wanting to purchase something or maybe needing something but this is an interesting reading Pisces well so the clarifying card for that insufficiency and lack of that five of cups And, and I say that, let me finish something up with the five of, of coins here, not cups, the five of coins. I was thinking the five of cups because the five of cups also shows someone who's grieving over three spilled over cups, what they no longer have or what they feel they don't have, but behind them are two cups upright and full, but they can't see it because their attention is only focused on what is lost or what might be lost. And here in the, the five of coins, it's somewhat similar, focusing on your empty cup or what you see as an empty cup, when in reality you may have so much more to offer or so many resources. And I say to offer because what clarifies this is the Knight of Cups. So Knights usually represent an offer or opportunities for change coming in uh, or being extended. And the Knight of Cups is the Knight of Water because that's the element which governs cups. And this is all about our emotions, feelings. It's the area of our life that deals with relationships. So the Knight of Cups comes charging and offering you know, their love, um, wearing their feelings on their sleeve, declaring their emotions, you know, maybe making an offer, an emotional offer, an offer coming from a place of, of love and romantic connections. But that's what's clarifying what this lack is or this insufficiency. And you have this contemplation energy, what I have put into this thing. I feel like for some of you Pisces, you may be wanting to make an offer of some kind, but you're unsure of it because you're not sure if you have enough to offer or if you're good enough or something. I'm getting that kind of quite strongly for some of you. And it may be with a person you have a romantic interest in, although there is some indication that you already have some kind of relationship with them that you've put some amount of effort into. And maybe you're thinking about taking it to a different level or a more romantic level but you're afraid somehow, again, maybe there's some insecurity issues. For some of you, you might be needing some assistance on something and maybe wanting to reach out and ask for help. Perhaps you're taking stock of what you have, but you don't have enough. You need extra, so you need to go asking for it. Do I accept an offer or not? Next to that, we have the King of Wands, fire sign male, though it could be a female in a general reading, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising, somebody who is at the top of their game, as kings and queens are. So Wands is governed by the elements of fire, so this is the King of Fire, charismatic, dynamic individual, uh, probably easy on the eyes, somebody who kind of takes over a room the minute they enter it, uh, very charismatic, dynamic, go-getter. Uh, of a person. It's interesting because it's sitting next to this insufficiency and lack. And for those of you for whom you maybe want to make an offer or you think about making an offer, but maybe you don't feel you're good enough, or that because it's right next to this King of Wands, maybe you feel like this King of Wands outshines you in some way. And underneath the King of Wands is strength. 
which can be Leo's card as well. Uh, strength is about facing your fears, your doubts, your insecurities, kind of those shadow things about yourself, perhaps bad habits or insecurities and fears. And instead of denying them or running away from them, you walk through them, you face them, and by facing them and moving through them, making what changes that you can, but facing them and walking through them and taking action through them, you can actually harness them and make them, sometimes it's leashing them or making them your pets or making them work for you, or at least not having them be the thing that controls you rather than the other way around. When you allow your fears, your doubts, your insecurities to rule you, you'd be the one carrying in a corner in the you know, the, the leopard and the lion would be kind of growling at you and you'd be kind of cowering. But in here, she's faced them and she's tamed them by facing them and kind of making peace with them, meaning that you have to face them and walk through them, actually in action, walk through them. Uh, and that's clarifying the King of Wands. Again, it makes me wonder if some of you feel like you're in competition with this King of Wands for someone or for a job or for a situation of some kind, or you feel like you might have to go to the King of Wands and ask for something. I mean, I'm getting kind of a, a mix of stories, but the strongest one I'm getting is that you feel somehow like you're not quite up there with the King of Wands. Let's clarify this seven of coins taking stock five of coins feeling like insufficient in some way the nine of swords stress anxiety worry staying up at night thinking about this obsessively and in a very negative way kind of envisioning a negative outcome which sometimes might be a way of self-defeating but self-fulfilling prophecy if you tell yourself, oh, I would never get that if I went for it or tried to get it or that person or that job or whatever the situation is. So because I won't get it, I just won't try for it kind of energy. Sometimes it's a very self-fulfilling prophecy, but it's not actually reality-based. Because the Nine of Swords comes up usually when maybe the source of your fears or doubts or insecurities might be valid, but they're only like a two or a three or a four. And the Nine of Swords is a card about basically letting your fears and anxieties and doubts hijack your mind until it gets to be so big in your head that it's kind of paralyzing and it actually doesn't meet the reality of the situation. So again, it feels like, Pisces, you are, you feel in some sense, it's like you're looking at yourself and taking stock of what you have to offer whether it's in love or collateral for a loan or something of that sort. And you actually, I think, have more to offer or more that you've built up than you think you do. But for some reason in this situation, you're stressed out because you feel like what you have isn't enough or it's insufficient, perhaps to extend an offer. And then there's this King of Wands who somehow maybe makes you feel insufficient for less than. So let's clarify this King of Wands. Very interesting reading, Pisces. This may resonate for some of you in love and some of you in a financial or work or career path sense as well. Because I'm getting this sense of, I don't know, rivalry or competition with the King of Wands, or it's that you feel that way. And you've got to face this. You've got to walk through those fears and not allow your fears to kind of paralyze you or keep you from moving forward. So I'm kind of getting that from spirit as well. What is this King of Wands about? Thank you. Can't go wrong. It's about, that King of Wands is about the Five of Wands. This is a card of competition, rivalry, maybe rumors, petty gossip. But it is a competitive energy. It can sometimes show up as positive competition in sports. But, you know, everybody kind of vying for something, competitive energy, internal, external conflict uh, with people. Could be in, with yourself or a combination of both, but it's clarifying this specific king of wands. So there's a sense of maybe competition or this person is a king and I'm not or, you know, in whatever area this resonates in. Because I think some of you, this might be work or career you know, maybe going for a promotion or something or feeling like you need to go ask someone for something. Some of you, it may be romantic, like you're, you have, you have some invested already in the situation or in a person. 
maybe you were on a path of thinking you had more to offer and then along comes this king of wands and you're kind of left feeling like you're not you're the beggar kind of out in the cold but i feel like you really need to kind of harness those fears and insecurities and walk through them let's pull an advice and guidance card for pisces on how best to navigate through this for the last half of march of course timing being fluid this could have just recently been the case ongoing or is you know kind of ongoing for the last half of march advice for pisces Eight of Wands is your advice. Eight of Wands is movement forward. Messages being delivered, movement forward, travel, going forward. Wands is the element of fire, which is always about change, movement, action, power. And this is about moving forward. This is about communication. This is about making that verbal offer. Whatever it is you want to offer or ask for, this is a card of doing it. You know, having the strength to kind of do that. Harnessing whatever these wild animals mean to you, fears, doubts, insecurities, you know, bad habits or patterns that you have, which maybe, you know, it's time to let go of some of those patterns or ways of thinking or doing things. It's time to kind of harness those, make them work for you. And the only way you can do that is by facing them and moving through the, them uh, very assertively and get those message out, get that message out. It's, this is about movement forward because that's where you're going to get your success. So very interesting reading, Pisces. I, I always love to hear feedback, but this one I'm pretty intensely interested in. So for those of you for whom this resonated, by all means, uh, write me and let me know how or post it in the comment section below. Uh, and again, if any of these readings do resonate with you and you'd like to take a deeper look at something or reach out for a personal one-on-one -on -one reading, just click on that little arrow, click on the description link, and you'll see a little more info and contact details. Feel free to email me directly at Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I would be most happy to work with you. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the April 2020 general readings. Until then, as always, Pisces, I almost called you cancer for some reason. Uh, I hope to see you back here again soon, and I wish you much uh, love, joy, peace, success, and don't let that fear stop you from moving forward. So I hope to see you again soon in a couple of weeks and I will talk to you later.